All right, welcome back to my little video channel here. This is Dave, and um, I changed the channel a bit last night to reflect, uh, you know, where I'm headed philosophically, and the fact that I <clears throat> really want to focus on Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard, and not. <clears throat> I don't want people to think I'm part of some neocon cabal. So you name a channel the neocon job, people are going to think, hey, he's a neocon. What's he doing on here? <laughs> <laughs> um, even though the words con and job were next to each other, and that might be indicative of a channel that's not devoted um, to uh, loving neocons, when you have a picture of John Bolton's head cut off. Um, I don't mean literally, by the way, I just mean... <clears throat> anyway, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> be, I'm not monetized, and you know I'm sure I'm not going to be monetized for quite some time, but if sim somebody sees this video... They'll say, nope, uh, severed head's not a good thing. Um, let's talk about stuff that's been happening. Uh, Venezuela, where Tulsi Gabbard, out of the gate, has said no. Uh, regime change in Venezuela is not good. Apparently, we just avoided some large military uh, conflict, thanks to Colombia. Thank you, uh, Colombia, for saving the day. Um, I'm not into geopolitics this much where I'm looking at all the countries in the region. Uh, I'm just, you know, you hear the M Monroe Doctrine, which I did a video about, John Bolton is saying, hey, we're not afraid to use that. And people are walking around going, what's the Monroe Doctrine? Why would we use it? Why, what is wrong with these people? It's not like the 1800s. Let's just, you know, let that country sort out its own affairs. And we keep propping up this guy who, nobody wants down there and uh how much money are we wasting in the process trying to flip venezuela you know what i mean it's not like flipping a, a house or a condo it's just it's just crazy it's and this is why i'm voting for tulsi gabbard because she's the only one talking about this and uh well maybe rand paul is talking about it too but um the only one who's running for president who has an honest to goodness, and I did see a video um, from, I think it was, I can't remember who the source was, but they were talking about how really she's the only one who could beat Donald Trump. And I, I'm i pretty much in agreement with that because Trump is solidifying his base. Trump is like this bigger than life character. And his, he would have to tone it down uh, he couldn't be so bombastic when there's a woman on the stage, debate stage with him, who has a military service record and who has credentials and who is incredibly well-spoken and uh, has her talking points figured out because her talking points are, are actually what she believes, okay? This isn't Kamala Harris. This isn't Cory Booker. I mean, these guys to me are all like just small time players. Now I know Bernie is in and Bernie is an attractive candidate for a lot of folks on the left. Uh, Bernie is not an attractive candidate for anybody on the right or even in the center. I think for some reason there's a disconnect and maybe it was the last election cycle. Uh, people didn't take to Bernie at all in those areas. Okay, there may have been a few independents that thought, okay, this guy He's got some good ideas. Of course, he didn't get out of the primaries. And I'll tell you what, if this happens to Tulsi Gabbard, where she can't get out of the primaries uh, to the general election, um, you're going to get the neo-lib versus the guy who said he wasn't a neocon who is now being controlled by neocons. And to me, that's disastrous. $21 trillion in debt, uh, no end in sight. Um, we need this money back in this country. Um, Rand Paul said we've spent $6 trillion on, I believe, the war in Afghanistan since it began. Uh, we didn't take into account the war in Iraq or all these other uh, skirmishes, what we're doing in Syria. I mean, if the debt, I would say that's probably at least half the debt right now is from the last 20 years. I'm not saying, you know, we couldn't cut in other areas to balance our budget and to get things in order. But 
if we don't tackle the warfare state, we are screwed as a country. And Tulsi Gabbard's message, that's why I'm over here, because her message supersedes all the other stuff. You can talk about all the, you know, the trillions supposedly she wants to spend on domestic programs and so forth. Um, she has credibility if she wants to knock out the biggest thing that we've ever spent money on. And again, Jimmy Dore had a, a thing up, and again, I'm not like a huge Jimmy Dore fan, but he's he's tolerable. I can listen to him and not think I'm I'm not hating on the guy when I'm hearing his voice, which is different because typically guys like him who are kind of like wise asses and get up there and start trying to be smarter than everybody in the room, um, he just makes some really good points. The things that we have money to spend on and the things that we don't. And we appropriated more money to the military, I think, than in our history. And both parties just kind of go along with it. I didn't hear any resistance votes. I didn't hear anybody saying, oh, I'm voting no. We've already spent too much as it is. No, it's just approved. Both parties just send it, sail it on through. You know, Trump wanted to knock out ISIS. Then what? Then what? Okay, you got ISIS pretty much under control. So why are we going all over the, the world? Elliot Abrams is rubbing his hands together. John Bolton is rubbing his hands together. We need Tulsi Gabbard, folks. We need her, and that's why I'm here, and that's why this page is going to continue, and I've changed the name of the channel. So spread the word, subscribe, do the usual stuff. I will be here uh, as I uh, hear the news and watch things unfold. I will be here to defend Tulsi Gabbard from her own party, which apparently doesn't appreciate military service. Well, that's what I'm starting to see. All right, done. See you soon.